After such a long day, I'm exhausted and just want to relax and probably watch my favorite content creator until one of my clients contacts me. Oh wait, there is one. First question is going to be what is section? So according to the internet, uh, the section is... <sighs> Man, let me do this easier. This is my lovely potato and here, that's a section. How many sections can we have here? Or can we have in a single beauty? Well, theoretically, we can have a lot, just like your salary. Just in case you don't like my lovely potato, I got a plan B. And of course, you can do the section in the other way. I mean, in the other direction. Don't worry about sections, all right? They taste just fine. The second question is going to be, what's the purpose of the section? One is try to show the relationships between space to space or elements to element. And the other one is to call out the construction details. The next question is going to be how many types of section are there? Generally speaking, we're going to have three types. The first type is going to be a standard section. The second type is going to be a section perspective. While the third type is going to be a isometric section. So here comes another question. What's the difference between all of them? And let me make this more clear. I'm going to take the very last one as an example here. The first thing is going to be skill figures. So in our architectural drawing, we usually take ourselves as a reference. The section perspective here is just not the type for it. So the scale figure in drawing have variable sizes. We can determine the spatial experience by comparing us to the space. Even if we can, it is just not that efficient as the other two. The second one is going to be the space to space relationship. And this is the main reason I mean, the main purpose of doing a section drawing. In the first two types of drawings, we can easily tell the space to space relationships. Because of the isometric view, roof will cover a lot of the info. However, we can fix this in longitude direction. So in this part, it is a yes and a no for the ISO section. And the last is about the more infos behind the cut. As we know, the section is a 2D projection. So it is hard for a standard section to tell more infos in behind. And the other two just works fine. How to draw a section drawing. In the elevation video, I was saying that the drawing is depends on your workflow. Things is just a little bit different. So for a section drawing, most of the time we're initiating the 3D model first. It is just super real to do the section within like 2D in the first place. Typically speaking, after making 2D in Rhino or SketchUp or Revit or whatever you want to use, we're going to have two steps. So the first one is do the cutting lines. The second step is do the rest. I want to show you some examples here. The first example is a hand draw standard section by Quan. If you want to know how to do section by hand, this is a good reference here. Since this is a second year drawing, so it is really basic and fundamental. You leave the section cuts blank and color all the rest. By the way, the sky can be gradient. You don't have to do it all black. Second example is a set of drawings by Alex Sisov. The first one of the set is a standard one. Just look at the line weight, the context, the scale figure, and well-used colors. The second of the set is a super creative one. This is a perspective of exploded section drawing. Normally, we're doing one point perspective for the section perspective drawing, and we don't usually apply the exploded style to the perspective view. In this drawing, it just makes a lot of sense. With multiple section cuts in his drawing, we can tell exactly what's going on of the interior. The third example here is from Claudia Serrano. Claudia Serrano. Yep, that's it. What she did is she combined the section perspective and the floor plan all together. Although this is not a construction drawing, 
there is still tons of details. We can see the concrete footing, the concrete slabs, curtain walls, and trusses. The graphics here will be also classified into tier 1. The color palette here is not that eye-catchy. I mean, just look at them in the color wheel. They are blending well and well balanced. When color draws too much attention, it is just not a like a good theme for the project presentation. The hatches are well done. You guys still remember in my side plan video? So I said in that video in the stage of tweak and adjustment. So do the hatches or apply the patterns will be a good option. This is a great example. Also, the grid system is well labeled. The opacity of the shadow is not overdue, which I appreciate that. Anyway, all the drawings I mentioned about I'll have the links in the description below so you guys can check them out. The very last one of the section is about the graphics. I feel like instead of showing you the final results here, it just makes more sense to watch me do this step by step. Watch it. Watch nah, it. I ain't talking my pockets. Just know we ain't running out the way that we stock it. If I got it, you got it. 